Hello there, you stunningly attractive person. You, this is Chris from TechSpot, and I'm here with two of the biggest and baddest Android smartphones that you can buy right now in 2020. This is Battle of the Pros. Oppo Find X2 Pro here on the left, just launched a couple of days previously, and then the OnePlus 7T Pro on the right, one of my favorite smartphones of the previous few months. Now, if you're looking for a premium Android smartphone experience, you really can't go wrong with either of these blows. But what I'm gonna do is a full side-by-side -side on the battery life, the performance, the everyday experiences, so you know which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So let's start with a look at the design. And I've got to say, when I first got my hands on the OnePlus 7T Pro, I thought this thing was an absolute beast at 6.67 inches. It's a hell of a hand filler. But then along came the Oppo Find X2 Pro, which rocks a 6.78 inch display. So yeah, neither of these smartphones are particularly easy to use one handed. Thankfully, you do get a bit of help. So for instance, you can swipe down that notifications bar just by pulling down from anywhere on the desktops. The Oppo Find X2 Pro actually goes one step further with a proper dedicated one handed mode as well, which is is definitely very helpful when you're using your apps. And both of these phones definitely have a serious heft to them as well, although they are at least comfortable to clutch thanks to the rounded corners and edging. Because from the front, they do look more or less identical. The major difference being the fact that the Oppo Find X2 Pro has got this little pinhole camera in the top corner, whereas in the case of the OnePlus 70 Pro, it's actually a pop-up selfie camera, which means you get this lovely full view finish. And if we flip the Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro around, you'll see it's a very different design on the rear end as well. Here on the OnePlus 7T Pro, you've only got one choice, that is a frosted glass finish. So as you can see there, it's very good at masking greasy prints and things like that. You'll only have to occasionally give it a quick buffin and it'll look good as new. Whereas on the Oppo Find X2 Pro, you've actually got a choice of finishes. You can either get it in a ceramic finish, which is kind of glass-like but even tougher, or you can get it in this lovely vegan-friendly leather. On the durability front, they both seem absolutely fine. You've actually got pre-installed screen protector on both the Oppo and the OnePlus, and the rear end seem pretty durable so far as well. The OnePlus it is water resistant but it doesn't have an official IP rating whereas in the case of the Oppo Find X2 Pro it is actually IP68 dust and water resistant so it can be fully submerged no worries. Now you've got an in-display fingerprint sensor on both the OnePlus 7T Pro and the Oppo Find X2 Pro nice and reliable and accurate as you would expect and you've also got full facial recognition as an alternative as well if your hands are a bit mucky or whatnot and you do of course have to wait for the actual motorized selfie cam to pop up here on the OnePlus but as you can see there it's nice and nippy not waiting any more than half a second or so, so it takes slightly longer than the Oppo. As for the rest of the design, it's fairly straightforward stuff. You've got a bottom-mounted SIM tray, you've got Type-C USB charging, and no headphone jack, unfortunately. Now, if you're a bit of a media fan, then guess what? You're going to be in for a treat no matter what your choice here. You've got an AMOLED panel on both of these smartphones, so you get nice bright output, so clear visibility even in a very sunshiny day. Uh, nice punchy colours, and if you dive into the settings, you've actually got full control over the output as well. So as you can see here, both these smartphones actually start with vivid colours, but you can boost that down a little bit to more gentle, natural hues if you want. You can actually play around with the screen resolution in these display settings as well. So they both top off at Quad HD Plus for nice crisp visuals, or you can leave them on the dynamic setting, uh, which just helps to preserve your battery life by not having it in that Quad HD setting all the time. You can also play around with the refresh rate as well. The OnePlus 7T Pro tops off at 90 hertz, whereas it goes all the way up to 120 hertz here on the Find X2 Pro. And uh, here on the Find X, of course, you've got that dynamic setting as well, so we can actually switch up to 120 hertz only when necessary, again, to preserve battery life. Now you can expect absolutely stunning visuals from both of these two handsets though the Oppo Find X2 Pro definitely has it you've got full HDR10 plus support whereas the OnePlus 7T Pro tops off at HDR10 for instance and while the OnePlus 7T Pro is certainly super bright tops off at around a thousand nits the Oppo Find X2 Pro can clearly go even brighter as well I think it tops off at around the 1200 nit area uh, but yeah clearly a brighter image when you boost them both up and play them side by side and also on the Find X2 Pro you get Oppo's Ultra Vision engine as they've turned it the software smarts that can upscale that content so for instance your 30 frames per second content can look like it's gone at 60 or even 120 frames per second although at 120 fps you've got to top it off at full hd resolution you can't get it in quad hd plus doing that as well and you can also boost the quality of sdr content to near hdr levels as well and while you can notice the difference between these two handsets when you do play content side by side like this to be fair when you get the oneplus 70 pro by itself that video still looks absolutely stunning your games look gorgeous as 
as well. And because you've got that 90 hertz refresh rate, everything is silky smooth from the interface to your gaming experiences, whatever you want. Now things are pretty close when it comes to the audio. You've got a pair of stereo speakers on both Fine X2 Pro and the OnePlus 70 Pro as well. Dolby tunes, you've got a good support of uh, Dolby Atmos and the likes of that. So let's just boost them both up to maximum volume and give them a bit of a comparison. HD screens capable of a 120 hertz refresh rate, even at that max resolution, unlike Samsung's S20 handsets. Right, so that's the uh, Oppo and now the OnePlus. Even at that max resolution, unlike Samsung's S20 handsets. And apparently using the 5X2s will feel just like skin and down. So as you can see there, nice, strong, clear output, even on that top of volume, uh, definitely loud enough to cut through any background noise. And yeah, certainly will do the job. Of course, if you're gonna be listening to music or something like that, you wanna connect some headphones or something, uh, Bluetooth 5 support on both of these blowers, and it's nice and dependable as well, no crackling or weird cutouts or anything like that. Now let's check out the software, and both the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro support the latest Android 10, so nice and fresh out of the box, no having to hang around for an update. So that means, of course, you get the likes of the dark mode, which is fantastic stuff, you get full gesture navigation, and of course, you've actually got the manufacturer's own overlays on here as well. So the case of the Oppo Find X2 Pro, it's a bit of color OS version 7.1, the latest version. Here on the OnePlus 7T Pro, it's Oxygen OS as well. So the experience is slightly different. So for instance, you've got the uh, shelf here uh, when you swipe right on the Oxygen OS. In the case of the Oppo Find X2 Pro, you've got the Smart Assistant. They both do a very similar sort of thing though. Overall, you can put different widgets on there, get fast shortcuts to whatever you want. Full customization, of course, on both, as you would expect. I found the Color OS has definitely got more features crammed in there. It is a little bit more messy as a uh, result. Unfortunately, there's so much stuff buried away in these settings and you really do have to dig around to actually find the good stuff. So I personally prefer Oxygen OS. It's a little bit neater and tidier while still packing most of the features you want. The only thing it's really missing is that dedicated one-handed mode. Gamers are well catered for by both the Oppo and the OnePlus. You've got a game space tool on both of these, which is slightly different, but in both cases, it allows you to dedicate all of your resources, especially the likes of uh, network connectivity, to the game itself, so for the best possible performance. And of course, you've got the likes of notifications blocker to really keep you focused. Now, if you demand the absolute best possible performance right now, then the Oppo Find X2 Pro is your huckleberry. This thing sports the very latest Snapdragon 865 chipset backed by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM, no less. Here on the OnePlus 70 Pro though, it doesn't do itself any disservices. You've got the Snapdragon 855 Plus from the end of last year backed by 8 gigs of RAM. There's the apps basically load up the instant you tap them. You won't notice any serious slowdown or anything in there. The likes of PUBG Mobile plays on those top detail levels with a super smooth frame rate. And just in case you're into a bit of benchmarking as well, I have run Geekbench on both of these devices. And as you can see there, no real shock that the Oppo Find X2 Pro has got the OnePlus 7T Pro beat. Now as for battery life, I found it's basically a tie between the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro. They'll both do you a full day of pretty intensive use, a lot of screen on time without too much of a sweat. And that's basically because the battery size isn't too different. It's a 4260 milliamp here on the OnePlus Find X2 Pro, whereas it's a 4085 milliamp here on the OnePlus 7T Pro. Neither of these phones support wireless charge, and the OnePlus 7T Pro is still pretty nippy when you do plug it in, though it's got that Warp Charge 30T, so it'll power up in about an hour or so. However, the Oppo Find X2 Pro again has the OnePlus Beat. It's got that killer 65 watt supercharge. So basically in power up to full in just under 40 minutes. Very stunning stuff. Both these phones will definitely do you for storage as well. You've got 256 gigs here on the OnePlus 70 Pro. The Oppo again one ups the OnePlus though with 512 gigs of space packed on there. But you don't get micro SD memory card support on either of these handsets, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, but if you manage to fill that up anytime soon, then I'd say maybe ease back on shooting so much 4K video or whatever the hell you're doing. And when it comes to connectivity, the Oppo Find X2 Pro is again the winner. It's got full 5G support by default and Wi-Fi 6 crammed in there as well. You don't get either of those, unfortunately, on the OnePlus 7T Pro. Now let's flip these bad boys over and take a look at the triple lens rear camera tech. Both of these smartphones sport a 48 megapixel primary lens with optical image stabilization. The OnePlus uses Sony's popular IMX586 sensor, whereas the Oppo has exclusively used the the IMX689, which is fresh and new. And both these blows have an ultra wide angle lens, but the Oppo Find X2 Pro rocks again a 48 megapixel effort, whereas the OnePlus downgrades to a 16 megapixel snapper. And while the OnePlus 
70 Pro's 8 megapixel telephoto lens with 3 times optical zoom is pretty impressive stuff. The Oppo once again upgames it with a 13 megapixel periscope zoom capable of a 10 times hybrid zoom and 60 times digital zoom. And basically what I found in my everyday shooting with both these cameras is that the OnePlus 70 Pro is pretty dependable in most situations. It occasionally falters a bit in HDR and some of those more tricky situations but the Oppo Find X2 Pro definitely seems a bit more dependable. Some of those shots come out with just a little bit more detail, a little bit sharper contrast. The overall camera experience is pretty similar though you do have an AI mode which gives you dazzle colour here in the case of the Oppo which just boosts some of those more vibrant images. Uh, you don't have that option here on the OnePlus but to be fair it doesn't really matter too much. You can quickly flick between the, uh, the different lenses ultra wide angle standard and then of course a nice bit of the telephoto zoom action uh, but of course you can zoom in much further here on the Oppo get really in close on those meerkat pecs. Kind of a similar set of features overall though you've got a portrait mode on both these balls which does the job nicely just gives them a nice bit of a bokeh style action in the background to help your subject stand out and of course uh, if you drag up there you've got full night mode on both of these blowers as well which again just takes lots of different shots of different exposures to help brighten up the overall image it's definitely more impressive here on the Fine X2 Pro in extreme low light though it can really get some impressive color depth and detail into very very low light shots which the OnePlus kind of struggles with and good news if you know your way around a camera because you've got full pro controls on both the Oppo and the OnePlus you can mess around with the white balance exposure levels and you've got full raw support as well as JPEG 2 so you can get a bit of that on the go. As for the video well you can shoot up to 4k resolution footage at up to 60 frames per second on both the Oppo and the OnePlus as well for nice crisp and very smooth final results as well eerily realistic. Uh, in the case of the Oppo smartphone though you've also got a nice bit of live HDR action and you've got a little bit of extra help with the audio effects as well including for instance the wind noise filter. And I'll leave it at that as far as the side-by-side -side comparison between the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro goes. If you need a closer look at the actual software of these two smartphones, the camera tech, anything I like, just go check out my in-depth coverage right here on Textbook. I'll be bringing you a full review of the Oppo Find X2 Pro very shortly, touch words. So as you can see, between the two, the Oppo Find X2 Pro offers the more superior camera tech. You've got the better display tech on there as well. And some of those specs get a nice little boost, such as the fast charging and of course the storage as well. But the flip side is that the OnePlus 7T Pro will be about 300, 400 pounds cheaper. We haven't got the final Find X2 Pro UK asking price, but it's gonna be around that sort of thousand pound price point. So which one are you more tempted by? Would you splash the extra cash for the Oppo Find X2 Pro or would you be perfectly happy with the OnePlus 7T? Pro. Still an absolutely fantastic blower in 2020. It'd be great to hear thoughts down below. Please do pod subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely week. Cheers everyone. Love you.